Hey, in this video, we're going to control the color of an RGB LED using P5JS and the Particle JavaScript API. As it turns out, you can't see the color of the LED too well with the camera, so I'm just going to diffuse it using some paper and some scotch tape. And by clicking on the colored pencils, you can see the color of the RGB LED change based on what color I'm clicking on. And now it's time to wire up our board. I bought this RGB LED from Radio Shack. I'm going to put its pin readout right there on the right hand side. And this LED is a common anode, not a common cathode, which means we need to connect its longest pin to power instead of ground. Next, I'm going to use a 220 ohm resistor to connect the red pin to pin D0. And we're going to use a 100 ohm resistor between the blue LED pin and D2 and a 100 ohm resistor between the green pin and D1. Now we're creating a new particle app in their IDE. I'm going to call mine MiniHue. And then I'm going to load in a library. So I'm going to click on libraries and I'm going to type in RGB into the search box. And in that list, there's a library called RGB controls. I'm going to click on that. And something that's very important, let's look at the documentation first to see how this library works. So I'm going to click on the GitHub icon. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time before I do anything just reading through this document to see what's possible. And because this is the library I want to use, I'm going to click the Include in Project button and choose MiniHue. I'm going to click Confirm. And as you can see, it actually added all of the library's contents into my code. Now I'm going to take a look at the documentation and just to see how this works. I just want to make sure that I wired up my LED correctly. So I'm going to put in some of their sample code just to get things started. And so I'm basically just going to create a couple of color variables one for red, one for green, and one for blue. And so for the red, I'm going to say we want full blast red, zero green, zero blue. For green, I want to use no red, all green, and no blue. And for blue, I'm going to use zero red, zero green, and 255 blue. So 255 is the max. I'm also going to create an LED object. That's what calls the library. And I'm going to tell it which pins I'm using. And the last argument I'm going to say is false, which means I'm using a common anode and not a common cathode. And then finally, in the setup method, I'm just going to tell that LED, I'm going to set its color to red. Now let me just test this out to make sure that it works. So I'm compiling my code now. And then I'm going to flash it to the device. And if all goes well, after it stops blinking, I should see the LED turn red. And it does. So let's just try the same thing for green. Flash that to the device. We've got green. And then finally, let's do the same thing for blue. And since we're using P5JS in this example, I'm just going to download the complete library and that gives us all of the source code and everything that we need to get started. I'm also heading over to the Particle JavaScript API and I'm going to select the script tag. That's the thing that I'm going to need to paste into the index file in the next step in order to import the JavaScript Particle API into p5.js. So I'm going to click on index.html. I'm in brackets, by the way. And I'm just going to paste that in. The next thing I need to do is just to find an image that I want to use in my sketch. So I'm going to head over to the Creative Commons website, type in colored pencils into the search box, scroll down until I find an image that I want to use. There's one right there. I click on the free download button. I'm going to choose small. I'm also going to keep in mind what the dimensions of that image are. And I'm going to paste that image into my sketch folder. 
Now I'm going to head over to brackets where I'm doing all of my P5JS stuff. And I'm just going to try to get that image to show up. So I'm going to create a variable called image. And then I'm going to create a preload function. And I'm just going to load in that image. So mine was called pencils. And then in the setup function, I'm going to create my canvas the same size as the image that I downloaded. So I believe mine was 640 by 425. And now in the draw loop, I'm just going to show the image on the screen in the upper left hand corner. So let me just preview that now just to make sure everything works. Cool, and there it is. But what we really like to do, we want to be able to click on a pixel and obtain that color value, right? So inside of P5JS, I'm going to create a variable for that color variable. And in the setup function, it's going to give it a default value of 255, which is white. So I want to be able to see what color I actually clicked on. So I'm going to create a little box in the left-hand corner. So it's going to have a white outline. It's going to be filled in with the color we chose. And I'm just going to draw it as a small rectangle in the upper left-hand corner. And in the mouse pressed event handler, we're going to use P5JS's get function to obtain the color of the pixel that we're clicking on. So I'm just going to pass it the mouse X and the mouse Y, and that's going to store it into C, which actually wound up being an array. And to make it readable, I'm going to create a variable called RGB value. And what we're going to do here is we're going to split apart the C array. So the first value, C sub zero, is going to be the red value. I'm going to append a comma in there. Then I'm going to tack on the green value, which is C sub one. And then finally, I'm going to tack on the blue value. And then I'm just going to print it out to the JavaScript console so that we can see it. So let's check to make sure this worked. So I'm going to open up my live preview. And I see the swatch. That's good. By clicking on the colored pencils, that swatch color changes. And now I'm just going to open up my JavaScript console to make sure I can see the RGB values. And there they are. But now I actually want to use the call function method in the particle JavaScript API to send that RGB value to our particle microcontroller. So here's an example of how to do it. And so my code in this next section is based off of that. So here we're firing up the particle library from within P5JS. And now we're going to call its call function method. And we need to pass it a few things. The device ID, the name of the function that we're going to call, which we have yet to write, the argument that we're passing it, along with an authentication code. So here we are. I'm just going to head over to particle real quick to get our device ID. So clicking on devices, clicking on the device that's active, and then pasting that device ID into our code. Now next for the name of the function we want to call, call mine LED. The value that I'm going to send to that function, the argument, is going to be the RGB value. Then finally, I need to give it an authentication key. So for that, I actually have to go back into Particle and go ahead and grab that. So that's under Settings. And there it is. You just copy and paste that in there.
So now let's go back into particle so that we can write the LED function that can handle the values that we're passing to it. So first, I'm going to go ahead and create that particle function called LED. And its callback function is going to be called LED control. We're not going to do anything in the loop function. Instead, we're going to do everything in the LED control function. So let's go ahead and create that. So it's called LED control and we're passing it the RGB value from P5JS, and we're going to store that in a string called command. Now this next part's kind of complicated. We need to split apart that string based on the commas, and we need to extract those R, G, and B values. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to first get the location of the first comma. And then we're going to get the location of the second comma. And based on those positions, we're able to extract the red, the green, and the blue values. And so for the red value, we're going to read in from the first character up until the first comma. For the green value, we're going to read from the character after the first comma up until the second comma. For the blue value, we're going to read the character after the second comma up until the very last character in our string. And now that we have those values, the very last step is to set the color of the RGB LED using the RGB values that we're getting from P5JS. So LED set color, we're going to cast it as a color, and we're going to send it R, G, and B. So let's compile our code. Oh, it looks like we have an issue, and I believe that the function we created has to return something. So I'll return an integer. I'll just return one just so we don't get that error. <laughs> and let's try it again. Hey, all right. It will probably work now. So let me go ahead and flash that to device and we'll give it a whirl. Hopefully now, yeah, it's working. So when we click on a colored pencil, we're able to send those values from P5JS over to our particle microcontroller. I think that about wraps things up. So thanks for watching.